4.2, the discovery activity. For this activity, you'll need to cut out all the icons on your page of the money and the bourgeois and the rolls and the serviettes and all of those bits and pieces because what we're going to do is we're going to illustrate how the transactions from our bury stand are going to affect the accounting equation. Keep in mind that each icon for money represents 50 rand. The first transaction is you decide you've got this brilliant business idea and together in your group you are able to put together about 50 rand to start the business. And so you put this in a little Tupperware to start. Obviously you've now got 50 rand cash in your assets. But at the same time, remember you've always got to have two accounts involved for each transaction. And so therefore your investment in the business is going to create an account in equity for your capital of 50 rand. If you have a look at the equation, you can see that you've got 50 in assets, 50 in equity, and they are equal, so that's fine. You look at your 50 rand and realize that that's not going to buy you very much, and so you manage to convince your mom to lend you some money. She does want you to pay interest, but that will only happen later. So for now, when you get the money from your mom, you're going to get 200 uh, rand in your assets, sorry, 100 rand in your assets, and 100 rand in your liabilities as your loan from your mom. If you look at the totals, you can see you've got 150 in assets and a total of 150 of equity and liabilities together. Now it's time to start your business. You need to go shopping and you spend all of that 150 rand all at once on 120 rand for delicious burros, 20 rand on nice fresh rolls, and 10 rand on some paper serviettes so that you can actually handle them nicely without um, getting germs all over the place when you hand them to your customers, obviously. If you have a look, can you see that you've still got 150 rand on both sides? But what has happened is that over here in your assets, your cash has now turned into your stock of things that you are going to sell. What you need to do now is you need to now make your Burevos rolls. So take your roll, your Burevos and your serviette icons and cut them out nicely. Fold your uh, roll in half and wrap it around your Burevos and then fold your serviette over the roll. Staple the whole lot to hold it together if you like so that it doesn't fall apart when you run around selling them. You're then going to sell all your Bourevos rolls. Fortunately, there's a nice rugby match on today and it's just about lunchtime and so you're able to sell all 20 rolls that you're able to make. This means that you are going to receive 300 Rand in cash. Suddenly, can you see that your assets have changed? Your Bourevos roll has disappeared because you no longer have it, you sold it. And your assets are suddenly 300. That means that your equity and liabilities must be 300. But how did that happen? It happened because you ended up with a profit over here of, in fact, 150 Rand for the selling price minus the cost price. You sold them for 300, but they. So now what we can do is work out all of these amounts neatly as an accountant would want to do. Firstly, keep in mind that your Bourevos rolls are going to have to become a cost or an expense as you no longer have them and so therefore you no longer have the asset stock. Your totals increased on both sides of the equation because you had more cash. Your assets were a total of 300 Rand cash, which means that your equity and liabilities must also now total 300 Rand. This is because you're going to also factor sales income into account. Your sales and your cost of sales will be combined to work out your gross profit. Sales income was obviously the 300 Rand that you received, but what were your costs? Remember that you spent 120 Rand on Bourevos, 20 Rand was on your uh, rolls and 10 Rand on the serviettes, which made a total of 150 Rand. If you wanted to calculate the cost per roll, you would simply take this total and divide it by the number of rolls that you created, which was 20, and you'd get a cost of 7 Rand 50 per roll. To work out your total gross profit, 
you would use your sales figure of 300 and from that subtract the cost of sales of 150 for all 20 rolls that you sold to get your gross profit of 150 rand. So how do we take cost of sales into account? We need to remember that the selling price of 300 rand is not all the profit. We have to consider the costs. It's very easy to forget about this, but unfortunately we can't. It's not like when we were rendering a service and all the money received had been earned as an income. In this case, the income is only the difference between the selling price and the cost price. Sales minus cost of sales is going to give us what we call the gross profit. That word gross just means big. So it's the big profit before we take off other expenses like stationary advertising, etc. Our trading stock asset needs to be converted to the expense cost of sales because we no longer have the assets where the trading stock is not sitting in our box or on our shelf anymore and the expense is important to create so that we don't think we made more money than we actually did. So how do we actually do some calculations if we wanted to factor this in? Often businesses will add a percentage of the cost to that cost to get the selling price to make sure that they are able to cover all the other expenses and make some profit at the same time. In our case, the cost of one roll was 7 Rand 50. We added 100% of that cost, in other words, the same amount again as the markup of another 7 Rand 50 to get the total selling price of 15 Rand per roll. So the formula that we would use here is the cost price times 100% to represent that cost price because obviously that's got to be part of the answer and if you leave it out all you're going to get is the amount of the gross profit but if you're trying to work out the selling price you need to factor in the cost so you include that first hundred to represent that initial cost and then you add the markup percentage this might be 50 percent 75 percent sometimes even 200 percent if for example your rent is very very high or you have to make a very high profit to make up for risk or something like that so in our case we said hundred percent for the cost price plus another hundred percent to cover costs and make a profit which was 200 percent our cost price of 7 rand 50 times that 200 percent which is the same as saying times 2, gave us our selling price of 15 Rand. You might want to then adjust the, the selling price slightly to be a little bit more suitable. For example, if the cost ha had been 7 Rand 80 instead of 7 Rand 50, that would have given us a selling price of 15 Rand 60, which would be a little odd. It would mean that we would have to find lots of 20 cent pieces for change and it would just be inconvenient. It makes much more sense to say, well, we'll just suck up the fact we're not going to make quite as much profit and sell it for 15 Rand instead because it's more likely that people will have 10 Rand and 5 Rand notes. If you need to work out your cost price backwards from the selling price, obviously in this case, assuming that you haven't adjusted the selling price and have used a constant markup, you can take this exact same calculation and just reverse it. So instead of saying times your 100 plus the markup, you are going to start with a selling price and divide by the 100 and the markup to get the cost price. So if you wanted to work backwards and find out what was the cost price of our Borovos rolls, if we sold them for 15 Rand and used 100% markup, you would say 15 Rand divided by 100% plus the markup of 100%, which is 200%. And if you said seven, uh, sorry, 15 Rand divided by 200% or divided by 2, you would get your cost price of 7 Rand 50. Let's have a look at how you would write this in your accounting equation. Notice that you are actually going to do here exactly what you did when you were moving your icons about the page. We've just put this in words instead, but it's exactly the same thing. When we bought the stock, we suddenly had assets. Trading stock increased. We put the burvos and the rolls and the napkins on the assets 
but we removed all the money because bank decreased by that 150 rand. When you sell the stock, what happened was bank increased by 300 rand, which means that we earned an income of 300 rand. But that only takes the selling price into account. What we have not factored in yet is the cost. If we left it like that, we would be saying that we still have trading stock in our assets. But do we? No, of course not. So now you need to factor the cost price into the equation. Your assets would decrease by 150 Rand cost as you no longer have those Borevoort's rolls. And in your equity, you would have to show the expense of the cost of those Borevoort's rolls. So that at the end of the day, your net effect is the gross profit of 150. If we look at the different accounts that exist in the accounting equation, obviously you can see here as current assets, you've now got a new account for stock. We include it as part of current assets because hopefully you plan on selling your stock within the next year. Remember that is the difference between non-current and current. Do you plan to keep it for longer than a year or shorter than a year? Hopefully your stock will sell quickly. Bourevoort's rolls you certainly wouldn't would want to keep for more than a day. In your owner's equity to calculate net profit, remember you've got income and expenses. We now have a new account for sales as part of our income. And in our expenses, we have a new account called cost of sales. You're now ready to go and try formative assessment 